Rattler Vlog episode 57, Tyler Olson. Thanks for joining us here, guys. I can't believe we've done 57 of these. We started them back in, I think, May. Uh, and we've done, I don't know, three or four weeks since then. It's gone really, really well. So I am loving doing these. They're a lot of fun. Let's get tonight's guest on the show here. You might know him as the head, the associate coach, or the interim coach of the Rattlers men's volleyball team. Now the head coach, he's joining us now. How's it going? There he is. It looks like he's taking a break from his gaming session. Uh, I don't have earbuds. I, I just don't have earbuds. I'm looking all over. I'm like, oh, I got to have at least like three, four pairs of them. Nothing. So it's to the A10s, I guess. This works just great. No problem at all. Can you hear me okay, though? Is everything, everything can, good at your I rest? can hear you perfectly, perfectly. All right, everyone. This is Tyler Olson, uh, head coach of the men's volleyball team. Uh, joining us today on the Rattler Vlog, Tyler, originally from Balfe, Alberta. You said it. Is it safe to say that you had a, a rural Alberta upbringing? Or tell me a little bit about, about your family and what life was like back in Balfe, Alberta. Well, uh, life in Balfe started in about 2004, so I was about nine. Actually, what a lot of people don't know is I spent a good uh, portion of my childhood in Calgary. So from about 96 to that time living in Calgary and then moving to Balfe, the village of 400 people, like that was a change. So we're not farmers or anything, but uh, yeah, it's safe to say I had a rural upbringing. Like all my friends were farmers, uh, a lot of Ukrainians up in that area. And uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of grain farmers. What, uh, what business were your parents in and why Balfe of all places they could have moved to? Well, I don't, I don't know. Dad's a, dad's a flooring contractor, so uh, I guess the work was booming there. Got a few connections in that. And uh, uh, mom, basically, uh, she's a dietitian in a hospital, so same thing there. There's a hospital in Camrose. Uh, everything we need is pretty much in Camrose. Yep. Uh, siblings? Uh, younger sister. Again, okay. She's uh, 23. Good. So uh, whether it was in Calgary or uh, in Balf, what are, what are some of the adventures? What is some of the trouble you got in? You know, maybe you got that, uh, you got, you got the two wheeler and you got some independence that way. Where did you go and what did you do to get into trouble? Oh man. Uh... <laughs> Well, to Camrose, I guess. That's uh, the big city, right? You go to Camrose. Uh, once the guys get licenses and stuff like that, uh, you meet new people. Like all the all the people you kind of uh, meet through sports, right? I, uh, I'm not going to be specific, but I mean, uh, yeah, like uh, motorcycles, <laughs> stuff like that, right? Like quads, ATVs, yep. just, just a whole bunch of stuff we shouldn't do. I'm not going to incriminate myself here, Kim, but... Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no that, it's just anything right like a lot of gravel roads out there like that that was the main source of fun like if we couldn't find a party like it, it'd just be cruising dirt roads it's uh like uh we were we were a bunch of hicks for sure yep so would you say that sports kind of kept you out of a lot of trouble that maybe some of the other kids might have gotten were you involved in sports oh, right yeah. from right from you know middle school and beyond yeah 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 definitely well i mean we found our trouble you know us the 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 sports crew, you know, we, we find our own trouble for sure, but definitely sort of just, just the, just the type of trouble you get in, right? Like when you're, when you're part of a, a sports team or something, you're obviously cognizant that you're representative of something, right? So um, just having that there sort of at the back of your mind and it takes a, it definitely takes a second thought to go through with something. Uh, uh, whereas I couldn't imagine um, not having that sort of responsibility, not having an overarching sort of, ideology i guess and just sort of doing what you're uh doing what your uh, young young mind wants so tell and me having other friends around you to propel that. exactly so tell me about the balf wildcats uh because for oh, a while, you they actually the balf wildcats they, they actually had a pretty good volleyball program when you were there did they oh not? Did yeah they always 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 that was sort of our uh, that was sort of our thing uh i went uh when i was in grade 10 that was the year after uh, the coach Doug Bowie left, and he had been the coach, I want to say since like '88, because my mom graduated that year from Balf, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he was the coach. I just missed him, unfortunately, but uh, we carried through. I think we got like uh, we went to provincials every year, and then uh, two silvers in 2011, and then 12. Who were the uh, Who were the main rivals of the Wildcats that you just <sighs> despise? We had. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a that's a tough one. We had some good games against like Camrose Comp. I would say playing against the Comp, we 
for certain years there, we hated them the most because they were close, right? But they were like a mm-hmm. 3A school. So, you know, there's 300 attendees and uh, ours was straddling the line between 1A and 2A with like 99 to like 101 kids, right? Mm-hmm. So we could sort of choose. But like we were, we, we fancied ourselves the better program, the better team. They, and uh, they tipped a lot to get points and we, uh, we thought they were soft for it. So <laughs> I'll stand by that. And so how, how did you arrive at the decision? Well, I guess, I guess as a rural kid, um, it kind of makes sense that Olds College might be the direction that you go. Uh, what, what was that decision like, and how did you arrive to, to start your, I guess, post-secondary career there? Oh, sorry, I have to apologize for the lighting here. I have horrible lighting in my house. It wasn't set up for a studio today. Um, you want to ask that question again? I said, so uh, being a rural kid, I would imagine that Olds College just kind of seemed to be the logical choice. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was thinking um, just, well, it was a, they had a specific program that I went into that I didn't uh, follow through with, but it was just something that my teacher sort of suggested. I had uh, been recruited uh, there and just, just, just a combination of grades and uh, not exactly knowing where I wanted to go. Going to a good two-year school like that is, uh, was, a, was a good choice, I think, mm-hmm. um, for that. It was their first year in the ACAC as well, right? So yeah. um, them sort of uh, merging into the league, it was a good opportunity. We had a huge tryout that year, uh, like 40 kids, because there's still another – there or 40 men, actually, sorry. Because uh, mm-hmm. they had two teams. They said the ACAL program uh going so we actually had two teams that year i was on the acac team um but uh yeah that was cool but uh, the reason to go there i don't know I, I don't know if the rural uh thing really had much to do with it it was just sort of just time place um that, that was my option to uh go to uh play college volleyball and was it was it coach ryan at the time or did he arrive later there oh yeah ryan is uh i think this year going on would be his third year You're talking ryan marsden right yep yep yeah, oh, no, uh, so, oh, okay. yeah, I think because uh, when I played there in 2015, when I had gone back, it was, uh, it was Russ. Um, and then before that was actually a coach by the name of Steve Adams. So, so they've had, uh, they've had quite a turnover in coaches in the past. Uh, well, I guess since their start of the ACAC. So uh, I'm happy to see uh, what Ryan's doing with, with olds there. So how did you arrive at the decision to come to Medicine at College? Was, it, uh, was there something about here that you saw that you, that you really recognized when you played here? Or was there a recruiting process? Or how did that happen? Okay, well, I always kind of wanted to be a rattler, right? Like, uh, I don't know if you know anything. Joel Kotick, that's, that's my best friend. He's a high school yep. uh, teammate. Um, so after just my years coming there, I had that year at Olds and sort of just just reached out to Joel I said hey what's uh what's it looking for the middle situation there and then I talked to Porter and uh you know uh thanks to Porter's good judgment and uh trust in his uh his players there uh myself as well as Decker Manil was it were able to uh be recruited out here it's just uh there there was such a winning um prowess about medicine hat that i just wanted to be a part of right um just uh we weren't i wasn't able to find the success that i was sort of looking for uh at old so i I felt like i needed to put myself in a different um position you know uh, geographically even yeah so now jump ahead a couple of years was was coaching um was coaching something that you always kind of aspired to do uh or yeah like yeah like i I, like definitely like i think just the sort of like the sort of player that I was was like sort of a coach, like like in like being uh, being a captain and stuff like that. You sort of, like I sort of took it as like as more of like a mentor coach sort of position. So I think like all the way through like throughout my entire um, you know career in athletics, I was sort of just looking to to uh, coach, I guess, right? Like just just yep. just to help other people, see other people succeed, right? Get them onto you know if they were on a level below me, see if there's a way where I could you know bring them. Uh, bring them up to me at the same time I'm trying to bring myself up to uh, the level of a uh, player who was better than me. So when it came to the coaching uh, job here, I guess you started as the interim coach. Was it something that you really yeah. pursued or, or is it one of those things that just kind of landed on your lap the way, the way things sometimes well, happen in life? You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to say uh, it landed in my lap. Uh, but that, that is uh, one way to put it, I guess. It's just, it's just, uh, I, I found a need, like as soon as they sort of lost their coach, right? And then yeah. one coach had to um, distribute their energy 
<laughs> on both teams. Like I, I don't know. I just, I did, I just had to. There's something that compelled me, I guess, to just walk yeah. in, and see what the situation was, and see if there's any way I could sort of uh, mend it. But that's that. That's basically how that came to be. I just, uh, I just offered my help, and then it sort of turned into that I was more uh, useful than I than I thought. Did you? <laughs> Did you get a memento or something from your first ACAC win as a coach? Did you keep a game yeah. ball or anything? What did yeah, you do? I did. I got, I got, I got, I got a game ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think it was Kennedy Weary that presented that to me, and it said, uh, "Always remember this," because it said eleventh. I think she said <laughs> it, it was the there was the date. She got like first, and then like the date sort of like uh, scrambled up. So I'll always remember that on my game ball. It says uh, whatever the date was, February eleventh. Uh, that's pretty cool. So, <laughs> um, so being, I, w- I would imagine the youngest uh, volleyball coach in the ACAC is that is that Maybe. safe to say? Um, Maybe kinda, that kind of puts you in a unique position. I'm sure there's advantages mm-hmm. and, dis- and disadvantages. What are what are what, what's maybe the biggest advantage and the biggest disadvantage that you might say? Uh, let's say, uh, sort of the age gap between my players can be good and bad, right? So, uh, mm-hmm. positive would be that I can empathize with their situation, uh, in like on like a. a nowadays like on a i don't know like on a current basis i guess like i can i literally know what's going on uh not to mention i'm just uh i'm still taking some classes too so with this online stuff like i'm able to empathize even more with these guys and just be like hey i get it you know like um yeah so just uh it keeps my expectations reasonable uh and then disadvantages that age gap because um it's just, it, it's tough sometimes because I played with some of the guys and whatnot. Um, it's not so much anymore. Like last year, it was way it was it was tougher because it's like okay, this is just sort of like a like an alternate captain just coming back or stepping in for practice while coach is away mm-hmm. or something like that. Uh, but this year, I think uh, I've been able to earn their respect a little bit. So so that's uh, becoming less so. Not to mention, I keep re- you know I recruit eighteen year olds and I'm not getting any younger. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do you have a chance? Is there much of a coaching fraternity, if you will, uh, in the ACAC? Do you have a chance to talk to some of the other coaches and and learn a bit from them, or do they keep their cards really close to their chest and it's all very superficial? Uh, What's the relationship? Well, I'm, like? not, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to go say superficial, but um, okay. it's like you, you do have to. I mean, you're not. You're not going to. You're not going to throw all your cards out there, right? Uh, um, but as far as a fraternity. I don't really know. I, I have yet to see that, right? Like, cause we, uh, um, not sure. Like I haven't been reached out to by other coaches or something like that. I've been thinking of possibly reaching out to some others, but uh, that's the thought that kind of comes to my head. It's like, what are they really gonna, you know, you kind of say like, are, you, you get a sort of a cynical mindset and you're like, well, are they gonna, are they gonna help mm-hmm. me or are they gonna, are they gonna, you know what I mean? So, so I don't that's know. Right. I, I'm sure I'll be able to build relationships. Like I, I like to think that I had relationships with other coaches, like, uh, like Nigel over in Briarcrest, like I, I have a lot of respect for that guy, and I like to think uh, likewise. So, so if it comes down to that, I think you know I could honestly uh, ask him a few questions about stuff, and I think I'd get an honest answer answer from him. But uh, we have rivals, right? So uh, you know, it's just like you, yeah. There's certain teams I don't know if I'd reach out to. Exactly. So, and and I guess on that note, where where we sit, we sit, you know, in the scorekeeper's table between the two teams and whatnot. Um, it it's happened so many times where there have been some really heated moments between coaches, just that yeah. ultra competitiveness. Have you ever had a heated moment with another coach yet? Yeah. Yeah, I have. <laughs> um, there's the, it, there's calls, right? Like, like uh, the, the coaches want the calls and stuff like that. And, uh, and uh, you just got to, uh, I don't know. Like I, <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, I, I sometimes open my mouth when I shouldn't, uh, and uh, that's something I'm I'm working on. But you know, yeah. if a guy's arguing with the ref and he keeps doing that, I might say something to him like, "Hey, let's go, man! Like that's not the call, or or your player's gonna hurt someone, or something like that." You know, but uh, that's just heated stuff, and that's neither here or there. But uh, yeah, I haven't. I get into more heated battles at coed than I do at <laughs> coaching so far. We've got Ty- we've got Tyler Olson joining us, the head coach of uh, men's volleyball at Medicine Head College. So you've played under a variety of different coaching styles. Has there ever been a situation where a coach has done something quite extreme after a loss or or after a bad practice to really get the team's attention? Just something that just caused the whole team to say, "Holy crap! I really got to pull it together." 
Have you have you had an experience like that where a coach just did something? I'm trying to unexpected? think because, like, yeah, I mean, see, because I don't know. It, 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 let me yeah, let me point ahead. one out. I think uh, I, I think it was basketball, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the Rattlers men had uh, the Rattler men had a uh, had a rough game, and the coach made the players take up all the chairs, then go into the stands and clean out the stands, all the garbage there after the game. Like just did oh, something nice. like that to really good, yeah. you know to to get the players' attention. Have you ever had to do anything like that? I've ever had to do it, uh, not other than like just like a talking to, just like hey guys, like you know, um, <laughs> I'm sure my crea- creativity will show through that kind of stuff, <laughs> but uh, uh, um, not yet. I haven't had to do anything drastic. I hope you know. I hope not, but uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty mild tempered guy, I guess. So, so anytime, anytime that you guys, these guys sort of set me off would be. I would expect it to be unexpected, hopefully. <laughs> well, and, and I mean, these days, as time goes on, I think the mindset of players is a little bit different. I mean, they don't want to be embarrassed in front of their family. They don't want to be embarrassed oh, in front of no. fans. You, 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 keep it, you keep it in the dressing room. You keep it in practice sort of thing, right? Is that, that's yeah, it's got to be respectful. It's got to be yeah. civil. Like you can't, you can't put anyone. And that just goes for it. That's just a, in every every aspect, right? Like you don't, you don't put someone on blast in front of their, in front of their people, right? But but at the same time, you got to look. It's just like, hey, uh, you can perform at a certain way, and if you're not, you know what I mean. Like if you're not um, performing in that certain way, and there's um, and there's no real reason for it, then that that should be embarrassing in its own, right? Like that should be. Yeah a little bit embarrassing in itself is that uh, you you got the shot but you sort of just weren't able to uh to pull through and exactly. that's, that's 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 just me playing devil's advocate right like that the mentality is a little bit different than that but uh that's just sometimes how i look at it you got to look yeah. at both sides but now, no I'd, I'd never i'd never i'd never put anyone on blast like that no now i i have not had a chance to talk to terry ballard or, or really anybody kind of at the administrative level but uh last week there was a story about uh i guess new facilities or new digs for the rattlers uh coming or, or in the plans now what would be on your wish list when it comes to a, a a new facility for rattler athletics when it comes to volleyball i guess a higher roof might be up there right uh, yeah. So are you talking, are we, are we talking weight room or are we talking, uh, uh, just like weight room or, uh, well, gym I, facilities well, you, like you snake know what? or whatever? You know what? I, Cause I, I think I, what's oh. in talk is the weight room. I think what's in talk, the weight room, obviously we want a big okay. facility like red deer. Like we want some like olds, right? Like, like big old three court gym. You can pull the bleachers out from both sides. Uh, people want to go there. It's a multi-use facility, perhaps bring a little revenue to our school. Mm-hmm. Um, like that that's the dream some you know something uh like i i like the snake pit i like the environment um but as uh as far as you know drawing people here it'd, it'd be nice to have some really updated facilities yeah you bet all right uh tyler we want to wrap it up here uh, a couple more okay. things first of all show and tell segment oh okay what this is a hard one <laughs> what do we have for show and tell it's got to be something interesting or weird or just something that's got like oh. a, per- a personal story attached to it Okay, well, I guess this is what I could find. Uh, it's Tiger Woods 06 for the GameCube. Nice. Uh, I've got about six hole-in-ones on that bad boy. Uh, I haven't played it in a few years, but uh, this game is definitely what made me actually give a care about my golf swing. I just was playing this game. I said, man, I'm just going to get back into golf. So so ever since I started playing that, probably about three years ago, I, I gamed that like all summer. Uh, and then ever since that, I've just been golfing all summer. So uh, I, I accredit that that game, that video game, to uh, reigniting my love for the sport of golf. So back back in your playing days, uh, did it ever happen where a player might bring a gaming system and play it in the hotel and just kind of have a gaming <laughs> session there? Did oh, yeah. Happen? Oh, yeah. yeah. All the time. Yeah. Not like uh that was more like high school like uh like college demands a little more like focus right right? uh but uh i'm pretty sure provincials like 2016 provincials cole sanderson had 2k going like we were in the room with uh 2k (laughs) it would have been 2k 17 i think at the time so we we were going yeah like we were we a lot of our players that year like when we uh got the bronze at natty's like we 
we were hard gamers. Like Isak was always playing Dota or whatever, like a MMORPG or whatever you want to call it, right? He was on there. Like Alfred played that stuff too. Uh, yeah, me, Kotick, and Decker would always game uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Three. So, I, so I mean, yeah, like like there's a generation of gamers, and we can even see it in like the esports that's going to be coming coming here, right? Like there's there's an absolute. I don't know. It's it's part of life, right? And whether you whether you like video games or not, uh, it's a part of life, and uh, it's good entertainment. It's good fun, and uh, it's good for the concentration. Well, and I I mean just just hearing that uh, that all those guys. I mean, you're talking about some elite, high level volleyball players. There, they must have known what the balance is. They know when to shut it off. They know when to get their sleep. So, I mean, that's, yeah, uh, maybe, that's yeah. a tribute to them, right? So. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. You're right. You're right. You're right. There's uh, there's a time and a place for everything. You know, as uh, you'll learn that as the years go by, right? Hopefully, yeah. Um, and uh, you learn how to balance. So, Tyler, what is the uh, status of return to play? Uh, is there a chance that the Rattlers might cohort with Lethbridge and play some exhibition action? Or where yeah, are we at that's, with that? that's sort of what's, uh, what's in the conversation. I think uh, Terry's sort of in charge of the exhibition for, for volleyball. So looking at bringing Lethbridge and Briarcrest into our barn on uh you know around the beginning of november and then sometime mid-november we're just waiting on confirmation right like acac just released an announce uh an announcement that uh said um that like they were gonna have the season go two months it's possibly gonna go four months uh it, it, it's tough it, it's still a lot of gray area stuff so i'm just hoping that we can get a when we can get a definite soon so what, what are you working on? I mean, it's it's got to be weird from a coaching perspective. I mean, under any other situation, you know, you have the – you set up benchmarks along the way and it all leads up to that first game or whatever. How do you keep the team focused when it's all just a big old question mark? You tell me. <laughs> there's no manual no, it's, it's it yeah. it's it, it, it's exactly it. like I, I don't know i'm figuring out as a goal right like no one else yeah. has experience like playing with this kind of thing like we're just playing it out i'm trying to i'm trying to make uh practices not only as useful as possible but uh still add uh you know give them the opportunity to have some fun you know and test their mm -hmm. test what they've practiced obviously it's not straight practice and, and we do need some breaks and stuff too so so i gotta sort of judge judge what their bodies are sort of feeling like now and uh, see uh, see what they're going to be feeling like in a couple months and, you know, just uh, just plan accordingly. Keep them on a uh, workout regimen. Uh, volleyball is very intrinsic, right? And I, I firmly believe yeah. that if you love the sport, then you're just going to be ready for it when game time comes, no matter when you have a season or if you're playing on the weekends. If you, uh, if you love volleyball and you're playing it every day, you'll get better at it regardless. Exactly. All right, Tyler, thank you so much for your time. Who All right. would you suggest? Who would you suggest we get here in an upcoming Rattler vlog? It could be a former teammate oh. or literally anybody, anybody that you think would actually be really interesting uh, doing a vlog. Interesting, interesting. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot of interesting people. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, you know, I think. Oh, he's gonna hate me for this. Ex teammate, my best friend, Joel Kotick. You got he's got it you gotta try and get him to do one. Just get him to talk about his life. Right now he's welding, he's making uh, he's making that northern Alberta money, but uh we all know he misses volleyball. So I think he'd like to talk about it and reminisce. He's got some good uh, standpoints. He's a guy that I talk to uh, all the time regarding volleyball. Uh if I could have him here as an assistant coach, I'd hundred percent do that. So I think it'd be interesting to get him get him through here. He's uh, he's an alumni, everyone here kinda knows Joel, so uh, I think it'd be nice to get him on there. All right. We'll hit him up. Tyler, thank you All so right. much for your time. All the best to you and the players. And uh, I can't wait to get into thank the you. snake pit and, uh, and work the first volleyball game. I don't know if, if they're going to have a glass uh, case for me or something. I don't know. But... I don't know. I hope, yeah, I hope it comes sooner than later. I hope we, uh, the, we uh, dot all the I's and cross all the T's. And I, I hope it comes soon. We get to hear your voice through the big calm there instead of these uh... – <laughs> These noise cancers. These cans. All right. Take care, my friend. Have a good night. All right. Take care. Thanks. All right. All right. There he goes. Tyler Olson, head coach, men's volleyball uh, here on the Rattler Vlog. All right, guys. That's it for tonight. Have yourself an incredible evening, and we're going to be back right here tomorrow, same time. Keep an eye on the Rattler social media for the announcement as to who that is going to be. So on behalf of Tyler, see you soon. Take care. This has been another Rattler Vlog.